Welcome to Web Development with Go. In this first video, we're going to start with a pretty basic web application. And the main goal is just to make sure that everything is working. So we're going to have about 15 lines of code. I'm not going to really explain what it all does just yet. Uh, in a future lesson, we're going to go over the code and explore what each piece of it is doing. But the goal here is really just to get something working, to make sure your Go tooling is working correctly, and to make sure that you're ready for the rest of the course and that everything is sort of there for you to work with. Um, before we do get into this code, I do want to mention that the code that we're gonna use for this you know, getting started is gonna be something that we're gonna experiment with and change over time. And you'll notice as we progress in the course that almost all the code is either going to be thrown away or refactored into something entirely different. Um, I mention that now because I think sometimes it can be a little bit frustrating when people first see it because they feel like they're, you know, they're not, they're not writing that stuff that they want to have at the end of the course. Um, but truthfully, this is how development works. So I just want to sort of prep you for it, that when you're learning things, um, or when you're a, develop, a professional developer and you're trying to use a new library or experiment with something, you'll often write some throwaway code just to get a feel for how it works. Um, then you can experiment with different stuff. And really a lot of the learning comes from experimenting and actually using the code and trying it out. So when we write this and when we start to explain it, if it all doesn't sink in, don't get too worried. Um, as we start to change things and experiment with it and, and adapt it for our needs as we progress through the course, a lot of it will start to click a little bit better. Um, and it's not something that you're expected to just get when you first see the code on the screen. Um, this happens for every developer, no matter your skill level. So just stick with it. And I promise that all of this is going to start to make sense as you go through the course. So we're going to start by creating a directory. Um, I'm just in this courses code directory, which is empty. There's nothing in here. Um, you can create their folder however you want. I'm going to do it in the terminal. So I'm going to create a lens locked uh, directory. Then I'm going to go into the lens lock directory and I'm going to open it up with VS code. So now that I have it opened up in VS code, I am going to go ahead and open up a main.go file. Again, you can create a file over here with a new file. I'm just going to go ahead and code main.go because this is how I usually do things. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and just start adding the code. So we're going to have package main, um, and then I'm going to add some imports. If you have um, a Go plugin installed for your editor, you might find that when you're writing imports, uh, the editor wants to add and remove them for you based on what you're actually using. So if I were to hit save right now, um, you'll see that uh, this goes ahead and gets rid of, well, apparently I need to update some stuff, but I'll do that later. It gets rid of the imports. And what's happening is it's the Go tooling is realizing that I'm not using those imports, so it cleans up my file for me. But I wanna actually type them in here so anybody who doesn't quite have that set up yet can follow along. Um, and then in, in a future lesson, I'm going to talk about editors and getting this stuff set up because I do think it's important to get this stuff set up um, so that you don't have to manually do a lot of this tedious work. Uh, also, because in all these videos, there might be times where I start using a package and forget to go back and show the new import being added. So having something on your end that will also import these automatically is very useful. So we're going to have a handler func. Um, and this is not something that you necessarily need to understand again. Um, you'll also see that I used a, an auto completion here. Again, I'm going to talk about that in a future lesson when I talk about editors. Um, but the big thing here is that we have an HTTP.ResponseRater and a pointer to a request are the two arguments. And then we're going to do fumpt.fprint. Uh, the first argument is going to be double W, and then we're going to throw in an H1 heading tag, which is just some HTML. And we're going to say, welcome to my awesome site. And we're going to close that up. So now we need a main function. And inside of our main function, we're going to call http.handlefunk. And we're going to pass a slash in is the pattern. And handlerfunk, that function we just created up here, um, that's going to be the argument we pass in here. Then we're going to fumpt.println, starting the server on 3000. Uh, let me put some dots here. And then we're going to start the server up with HTTP .listen and serve, And we'll start it on port 3000 with nil as the handler. And again, I'm going to explain all this code in the future, so you don't really need to know what I'm doing here. Uh, the goal is just to get something working. I'm not sure. I'm just going to overwrite. I'm not sure why it's thinking I have two files here. 
So now that we have this all built, um, the next step is to just go ahead and run it. So we're gonna go run main.go. And it looks like our server is starting up because um, it's saying it's starting. So now I'm gonna come over here and go to localhost colon 3000 in the URL for the browser, hit enter, and you'll see that we get welcome to my awesome site. And if we view the page source, you'll see that it has those H1 tags that we added. Um, that's why it's being formatted this way. So if you want to stop the server, the next step is to hit control C and that'll stop the server. If you ran into any sort of issues along the way, um, the next lesson is gonna talk about troubleshooting and some techniques for troubleshooting as well as some resources to use. And then after that, we'll talk a little bit about um, the rest of this code. We'll talk about uh, different ways to set up or different editor options and and what I would suggest for moving forward with the course. And we'll really just dive through everything in this code or you know in this 15, 16 lines of code we wrote so that you really understand it all.